Hopefully I don't need a steering wheel puller, but if this thing hits me in the teeth, it's gonna be a funny video. The way the bulbs work is there's a, a bright one and a not so bright one. And one puts out more light than the other. That's, I'm a scientist. Anyway. <laughs> Today I'm working on a Corvair. It's a 63 Corvair. Uh, it's a blue. It's a pretty neat little car. Let's see if I can do it to you here. Uh, the things that I'm doing on it today are a little bit of wiring repair. This has a uh, aftermarket sort of racing fuse block in it that I replaced a couple weeks ago. Uh, we were working on the blinker switch, which is here, which is actually a pretty interesting thing. Instead of having the blinker switch inside of the steering column, which is here, and I just made the horn work. When you have horn and blinkers, you're like really awesome in the uh, old car world. Anyways, I can see that through better, but it actually has this cable that runs down here, and the cable is turned by the a, uh, the stock on the steering column and it moves a lever inside of here. Here's a, actually a new one. Uh, I like to start off uh, when it comes to these jobs with uh, real easy fixes. It's always going to be a new headlight switch which I already replaced. Uh, we didn't have any lights to start off with. Um, it was actually only high beams and on the Corvair uh, there's the high beam on off switch and then there was a connector right down in here which is where the um, let's see if it'll focus which is where the main wiring for the headlights uh, came through so anyways got some of that stuff fixed up and I had already done some previous repairs on the car uh, some of this wiring stuff here, uh, rewired the coil, uh, rewired a lot of stuff really, uh, and then made it run I believe for the first time, but that's been a couple years ago. So I work with these two brothers and their dad on their old cars. They have a bunch and they're really great guys to work with. Uh, I wish I could get this thing out and get a decent look at it, but anyways, follow along and See what else I come up with. Great lighting. There we are. So, like I said, I made a bunch of repairs on this deal, and uh, we're just going to go through and test everything. The issues I'm running into right now are the left blinker doesn't want to blink, just wants to stay on. And after I replace this, it's called a uh, Racers Inc. Fuse box or something like that. Uh, it's actually a pretty cool deal. It came with some decent instructions. Uh, I would have read it a little bit differently, but it's also, it's not written for a mechanic. It's written for uh, regular people. So anyways, uh, I have the new switch here. We're just going to test out some functions. So I got left blinker on and blinking. And then right blinker on and blinking fast. Okay. All right, so I made the blinkers happy, hopefully. Oh, look at that. Got the indicator light. What 
what I had to replace the original socket with was just a, a universal deal that uh, we got at the local parts store. The bulb wouldn't stay in the socket very well. And then I like to use these uh, Hasetronica, Hystronica uh, marine grade uh, shrink wrap uh, connectors. I actually got these on Amazon. I got a lot of my electrical stuff on Amazon. So they're uh, heat shrink butt connectors. Let's see if I can get a better look at them. Yeah, heat shrink butt connector. Uh, solved everything. Yay. Okay, so I'm going to replace. This original bulb housing had some problems with the ground connection. You can kind of hear the bulb is loose. It doesn't want to sit down in there all the way. And uh, I'm just going to get real crazy and I'm going to cut, just cut the wires. And replace. This is a uh, Pico double contact repair socket it says for 1970 to 1980. Uh, the reason I wanted this is because I had uh, the original bulb socket kind of as a plastic deal with one little ground and this actually has ground all the way around. So it was just a good repair for this. It's not particularly uh, meant for a Corvair, but it's definitely meant to fix my problem. So I will. Uh, I know that it already fits in the hole because I already did the other side. Uh, one thing I noticed about these is I tried to get the bulb in originally, and this thing was kind of swinging around in there, so I had to align the back of it up here. So it would slide right in. Now the bulb will drop right in. Another thing I like to do is I like to um, I like to have the nickel plated or like a silver plated uh, bulb over a copper plated bulb, mostly because when I worked on European cars for so long, that's what worked out the best. But if that's all you got, that's all you got. Okay, so I don't have a wiring diagram, and the way that I know this is going to work is that I know that one of these two has power based on my test light, which I have hooked up over here. So that has power, and that doesn't. That means this is for the blinker wire, and this is for the parking light or running light. And so I'll just plug it in here, and that one's pretty dim, you can't see it. Oh, that one's actually dimmer. So this one, the there's the way the bulbs work is there's a, a bright one and a not so bright one, and one puts out more light than the other. That's I'm a scientist. Anyways, I just know that this is the parking light. It's not very bright. Sometimes you'll see cars driving down the road with one one bright tail light and one not so bright tail light, and they will have problems.
Oh, I got the switch down here. That's actually really good that the light is lighting and it's blinking at the same time. Now this one has a little bit of a problem. The light's not staying on. So this has kind of a ground issue on this one. And this one's staying pretty well lit. All right, we're gonna go ahead and uh, try and get the steering wheel off. I actually loosened it in advance before I put the camera up. So, I don't have a whole lot of room in here. I want to keep things organized, so I find a flat surface, which right now is the glove box door. Try and put everything over there so I don't drop it. Hopefully I don't need a steering wheel puller, but if this thing hits me in the teeth, it's gonna be a funny video. did a major faux pas. I want to make sure the steering wheel is straight before I start but as you can see this is a bit loose so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go get a marker and I'm going to put some marks on all this stuff to make sure when I go back together it'll go back in. There could be a spline that holds it in the one spot but I don't know that so Let's make sure. So what I got here is uh, just a paint marker, oil-based paint marker, and uh, test. Oh, that's nice. And uh, this is a really nice one. It's not smashed like most of mine. So I'll put a little couple little dots here as to where I think that should line up. And we'll get it close. I don't know. I've never driven this car. I don't know if the steering wheel is uh, has ever been straight. So I'll put one mark at straight up and down and one mark at like 90 degrees. So that when it goes back together, if I put it back together or anybody else puts it back together, there really won't be any confusion. So, just like I thought, nothing crazy. Man. Okay, so what we got here is actually pretty interesting. Instead of having all of the focus there we go instead of having all of the electronic components inside of here it actually turns and I wonder if I can see inside of there oh. there's a mechanism inside of here along with uh you know looks like a mouse nest some dead spiders that when you turn i wonder if i can get this when you yeah so when you turn the turn signal it actually pulls That, see that cable there? 
that little wound up cable thing right here. When you turn the turn signal, it pulls that cable up and down. But as you can see, it's real rusty and it's real rusty and everything just kind of moves. So that just needs to be, all the components are there, but that just needs to be disassembled and then cleaned. Hopefully we can put it back together. So that's probably going to wrap it up for me today. Uh, I got the headlight switch installed, I fixed the blinkers, I disassembled the steering column and uh, polished all that up and made everything work. So um, these projects are ongoing, they take a little bit of time, so I'm looking to come back a little while later and help them fix the clutch pedal that fell off right before I got here and work on some more stuff to get this thing going so we can roll it. Uh, him and his brother have a small collection of older cars. Nothing special, just stuff that they like to drive and it's pretty cool. So we're just going to keep rolling with them and uh, I'll definitely be back here. So see you later.